What's up guys? It's Brad again. Yamaha Marine Center. 1515 Wells Road in Orange Park. Right off of 295. Hopefully you know where we're at by now. But just got this bad boy in. Um, really good seller for us. We haven't had one in almost a year now to put on the lot. So this is a welcome surprise. But just to familiarize yourself with the boat, if you can say that word better than I am. It is a 2021, actually like the last 2021 that we're going to get Pursuit Sport 288. Why is that important? Because the prices are about to get out of control as if boats weren't already out of control. Um, all the supply chain stuff and the demand has driven prices up. So we're going to get almost a 10% price increase for the model year going into 2022. We're normally we're used to like 2 to 3%. So we'll see how that affects everything. But... Uh, one of the biggest benefits of this is one of the first boats coming off the production line with the new 300 XTOs. Why is that cool? Well, look at it. Pretty stinking cool motors. Little baby versions of the 425 and the fully integrated DES engines, digital electronic steering. So that's just better. Uh, some other features? <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, this is your above cavitation exhaust. So when you're backing down your exhaust comes out of here instead of the hub Which cavitates the props so you're gonna have better uh, backing abilities You know when you're backing down on them big old marlins and whatnot um, Yeah, I don't know they just look cool. and the lower units are painted now instead of being gray So they're really hopping on board with all the newest trends and then that that integrated steering will show you some of the systems on the boat uh, where that comes in handy but some more features in the back of the boat i'm gonna start here this time because why i like this boat it's their most fishable boat because it is a an aggressive 24 degree boat all the way in the back of the boat so you don't have that progressive or that rounded transom like you did in the past this is pretty much the old center console 280 hull they maintained it and then uh, put some improvements in it like with these transom extensions so I, i've explained this on other videos sorry if i'm repeating myself a lot but these are functional so when you're floating you know your water line's about at the bottom of the bootstrap there where those uh, scupper valves are <clears throat> so it functions like a trim tab almost so when you're floating it helps the boat float flatter because it is buoyancy and then it helps like a trim tab when you're getting on plane it pushes the front of the boat down and then it's out of the water when you're up running so it reduces the wetted surface so it, it's a really efficient hull i mean i think we we're getting like two ish miles an hour or miles per gallon miles an hour hope so miles per gallon out of it um you got integrated trim tabs so you got some good control over there and then you see that this outer chine stays flat so there's not like a lot of hook in it like a lot of boats do so it's it, it's not a slow boat and it planes well um I, I don't know i just can't say enough about it that's why they maintain this hole because nobody wanted them to change it it is a favorite of a lot of people uh down the whole side you can see it has a decent flare to it none of these pursuits are known for an overly aggressive flare so you do get a little bit more of that a uh, little spray over the side like when you're just idling around you know smacking little teeny waves on the side here and the wind might be blowing at a beam or a quartering um and, and get some spray on you but all in all we took this to the bahamas if you haven't seen that video it's on our channel decent video we're gonna do better uh i promise well, we're heading to the keys this year so hopefully we get some better video um but again the hull hard shine reversed all the way down until it gets flat and then these big strakes and then the entry on this boat is so phenomenal in the front it just cuts through the waves they like say coming back from the bahamas a couple years ago we had a pretty decent sea state all the way back and this boat did great we got a little bit of spray because we had a quartering wind we had to put up the spray shield but nothing horrible another feature that i like that pursuit's been doing with lumar is this um little shackle thing that comes down and then the anchor drops straight down so you don't have to have that big stainless bash plate on the front here because the anchor pretty much comes straight up and then hits that little shackle and then sucks it right into the boat so if you ever looked at the front of some of our competition their anchors hang out like a sore thumb at least tuck up and they're nice um you see that little shackle is deployed on this offshore over here so you can see the angle which that anchor comes out boop, straight down nice stuff uh fuel vents for our EPA mandated diurnal fuel system fancy name for expand and contract throughout the day 
uh, causing all the filling issues. You can see that big hard top with the uh, hull side color match. But some <clears throat> facts on this boat, which I should have given earlier. I don't know if you can see this, but base starting price is 239,980 with no options. As this boat is equipped, MSRP is around 275. Length overall is spot on 30 feet, beam 9 feet 8 inches, 8,220 pounds dry with engines. Dead rise, like I said, 24 degrees. Draft, 24 inches, 230 gallons of fuel, and uh, live well capacity is 24, blah, 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 blah. Cruise is 31, wide open 55, 346 mile range. So, very usable boat. Coming into the boat. You notice the dive door and we did install the optional dive door ladder which is why that bracket's right there dive door will stow in the mechanical space down below and then coming into that big transom platform you can see that you can access both sides of the transom get to the engine cowlings if you had to do any work on the engines you can stand back here pull the cowlings off and still have room on the side you can actually get to the props if you foul a prop with a ski rope or a fishing line you can get to it and hopefully unfoul your prop before you really get messed up. Uh, the steering, you can see how it tucks the steering nice and high on the transom. The biggest benefit of that to me is if you're at the marina, these engines trim like all the way out of the water. So you don't have to worry about the cones dipping in the water and having them painted and all that stuff. Uh, rocket launchers across the back. Not really rocket launchers, rod holders. But room for your ski toe that we can integrate there. It is an option, we didn't select it. We did install the optional uh, aft and forward Mediterranean shades. So that's these pucks right here. There's your live oil, I'm gonna say 24 gallons. And then we got a fish box. Actually, this is just the storage box back here. Man, I gotta pay more attention. That lifts out, batteries are down there. Switch, uh, if you got shore power, like with the bow thruster option, which we did not do on this boat, uh, your transformer would be down there. Your aft seat with the pop-up backrest. And then you have your aft facing seat with a pop-up backrest that makes a great trolling seat. We did do the cockpit table on this one so you can see the hole there for the pole. And all the storage room in here, your, your tabletop, your dive ladder, nice clean bilge like you see on all these pursuits. The pumps are nice and tucked up underneath the ledges. Uh, that limber hole right there, uh, this is a liner that you're looking at, so all the bilge management is underneath that. All your through holes, just like every Pursuit, are uh, electrically bonded. So I don't know if you see that green ground wire there to every through hole. So if somebody's leaking voltage in the marina or the slip next to you, it doesn't damage your through hole as bad as if it wasn't bonded. So it pulls that electricity right into the electrical system instead of corroding your through hole. That big uh, 1KW... Uh, B-175, I believe, is what's on the boat. Your bilge, uh, two bilges back there, regular and high water on a water witch system, which is that little black box on the side of the bilge. It's a sensor when water hits it. It turns on the bilge pump and sounds the horn, so the, you know the boat's going down. Uh, fuel filters, easy to get to, access to all your stuff. I say it every video, but the most impressive thing to me about these boats is Everything on the boat is built at the factory by hand, you know, with the exception of like the cushion foam, you know, they order that in, but then they cover it with their own vinyl and the electrical system. If you ever have a chance to visit the factory, that is a phenomenal thing. Seeing how they build all their own harnesses and everything. Um, fish box. And then you can see the deck drains are kind of hidden underneath there <coughs> and recessed. Fish box goes way up in there. So you get in any of those cobia or like I said, them big marlins. You can throw them in there. Transom door. And then you got your fresh water, cockpit lights, your quick connect for your raw water down there. And then what are those poles? Those are for your aft Mediterranean shades. So those slip into those little pucks. And then we hang the canvas from the hard top on the clips. You can see them up there somewhere. AM FM antenna, VHF antenna. Again, nice big hard top, big aft supports. Back here, you got little teak treatments. Fancy it up a little bit. Then you got your lights, speakers. And those are uh, 
red, white, blue lights. And then we got a vent access to the roof there. And then some of that DES stuff I was telling you. Digital electronic steering is the second piece of four pieces of the new Hellmaster EX with full, total, entire boat control. So DEC is the first step, digital electronic controls. So you used to have to go to a full Hellmaster to get all the cool functionality out of this one. Tilt trim uh, on both motors, tilt trim per each engine. So this same binnacle I think will run up to four engines with the two center and then outsides there. Uh, but being a twin, we don't have to worry about that. A cool function here is speed control. Uh, one of my other videos kind of goes through this, but you can actually hit that button to set either an RPM or a mile per hour, and then you can increase incrementally without having to, you know, screw with your throttles and keep them matched and all that stuff. Uh, you can run multiple stations using this stuff. Neutral hold, if you hit that button, it doesn't let the engines go into gear. It will rev them, but if, uh, you know, kids are running around, that's a good thing. Single lever, you hit that one, you can pull this lever out of the way and run all your engines on one. And then center engine, of course, on a triple engine setup uh, if you're low speed trolling or something. Twin 8612 Garmin XSV. And then we have the CL7, so that's another functional unit. So all these are multifunction, can do everything. All your dip switches, your VHF 315, non AIS model. We can add AIS if you want that. Oh, power steering button doesn't do anything anymore because it's all digital. Remember that fly by wire, phenomenal stuff. Uh, Yamaha switches, cup holders, JL audio, of course, and then a little glove box. Um, helm seat, pretty nice. You got a little adjusting lever there so you can go forward and aft. And then again, one of my favorite parts, just the little teeny touches that I think of. I could figure out how to get this thing off. Maybe smarter than the seat cover. Or just use two panels. There you go. So nice pipe work, foot down bolster, fixed armrests, little teak treatment. That's what I like. Just these little touches they put all over the place. Um, MDP. Come on. All your switches, breakers, everything for your electronics, all in one spot. Valve thruster, not installed on this one, windless. Uh, breaker down there All kinds of cool stuff coming forward on the boat. Sorry, it's dirty. Just came from the factory. Got a lot of fiberglass dust gel coat uh, backrest and we do have cushions. We put a bow filler on this one So we can have one big uh, Bow filler section and then these are insulated boxes drain overboard everything on the boat drains overboard Right there straight overboard and so if you want to use it for fish storage or whatever nice big bow area and you got raw water up here and an LED light so you can see what you're doing. And then you can plug your remote to your windlass in right here. Work your windlass from either the helm or forward station. Sirius XM antenna. And then we have more storage. And that would be the bow thruster pocket right there. If we had a bow thruster, then the battery would be up here as well. There's your freshwater tank, some more through holes, overboard discharge, freshwater pump. Like I said everything's pretty easy to get to. It's a well thought out boat. And then coming forward into the head compartment, there is your bow filler stowage. Got another fire extinguisher. Pursuit's big on that. Fire extinguishers everywhere. And then nice quarrying countertop, real wood veneer. Um, with your oversized head, nice oval head, so it's like the same size as in a regular bathroom. Steps, easy to get in and out, plenty of headroom. All in all, a great boat. Another picture of the boat looking backwards. Full windshield, big hard top. But if you have any questions, call Brad or Barton, 904-644-7631. Website, yamahamarinejax.com. Have a great day.